All right, so this is gonna be a pretty in-depth video, and I just kinda wanna go over exactly my entire framework, go into detail all of the reasons. Here's my four reasons why I think I'll be able to time the markets properly in order for me to make six figures in 2022. So just a little bit of a background. I bought Bitcoin, I first bought Bitcoin at around $13,000 with like 10K back here in November of 2020. And so, the reason why I think I could make six figures, well, I'm up already kind of, but the reason why I'm I'm gonna make six figures, I think is because I think Bitcoin's gonna top around 150K to 200K in between June and like September of next year in 2022. So why do I think that? So I just wanna explain these four things pretty quickly and I'm just gonna assume that like, I'm just gonna go off like you have no idea about anything about Bitcoin and you just clicked on this video. Okay, so fundamental premise of Bitcoin is that it goes in these cycles. So there is like a two, three year period when Bitcoin just goes up and there's like a year, two year period when Bitcoin just goes down. So this is the beginning. This is the chart of all of Bitcoin's history. This is the beginning. And you'll see that this is a logarithmic chart, by the way. So as you can see with the Y values. So well, this is cycle one, cycle two, cycle three, and currently we're on cycle four. So you could probably see on your own accord that these mass, do we have periods of massive appreciation? And then this is the bear market that ensues. Okay. So once you accept this concept, then the second concept is that within each cycle, there is something called a mid cycle pullback. So this is the first cycle. Uh, this is the first cycle. This is a bit hard to identify, but the second cycle was very obvious. This is the first kind of mid cycle peak that some people would like to say. And before the bear market actually happened, we had a little mini bear market before. So this is one cycle and this is the mid cycle pullback or the mid cycle peak. Go back, it goes down, pulls back, and then we have a second peak. And this is the real actual peak of the entire cycle. And so you get to see this pattern happen here. And on the third cycle in 2017, it happened over here. This was the mid cycle pullback and this was the actual cycle peak. So if we look over to this cycle, the same thing happened. This was the mid cycle pullback or the mid cycle peak and we are still yet to have a true market cycle peak. So once you accept those two things, congratulations, you understand, well, I guess that's my second point, mid cycle peaks and the actual cycle peaks. Now, we're gonna go to diminishing returns and lengthening cycles. So that concept is illustrated in this chart over here and i this is the 2017 bitcoin uh bull run this is the 2013 bitcoin bull run from here and here so i just brought that over here and so each of the lines that you see here is the halving so i'm measuring it from the halving dates and you'll see automatically that <clears throat> from the halving to the peak to each cycle's respective peak that each peak gets lower and lower and it takes longer and longer for it to appear. So that is the core reason behind diminishing returns and lengthening cycles, which is mostly, you know, coined by Benjamin Cohen. And he taught me a lot of this stuff. And so um, you could also see that in this second chart. So this is not confusing at all. I know there's a lot of lines, but these vertical lines are the halving dates and these horizontal lines mark the mid cycle peaks and the cycle peaks the same thing that we've seen here so i just drew those out for you for like you know just to make it easier to see so mid cycle peak real peak mid cycle peak real peak and then mid cycle peak and then this is the mid cycle peak and this is the real peak okay so um something to something really interesting is that there was there is a way to identify when the mid cycle peak is going to come and using that you get to you can, you can kind of figure out um, where the real cycle peak is going to be so the mid cycle peaks are represented 
and these yellow squares. And these yellow squares coincide with the RSI. So notice how the RSI demonstrate the mid-cycle peaks and the actual peaks. So mid-cycle peak here, real peak here. So there's always these two big, you know, there's these two lines that go up. Or there's a better way to say that. So you can see it here, mid-cycle peak, real peak. So there's just two peaks per cycle. And this is the first peak, which represents the mid-cycle peak and we have yet to have the second peak. So we're expecting to have a second peak, not because we have some kind of crystal ball, but because we look in history and see that, and we're just betting that it's gonna happen again, and history's gonna repeat itself. And so, yeah, the yellow lines also represents the mid-cycle peaks. And um, let me show you another reason why diminishing returns is a thing. So if you, try to measure the percent differences between each of these horizontal lines, you'll get an interesting thing. So the, the percentage difference between here and here is 2,700%. This one was 780%. Let's keep going. And you'll notice a trend up here. You'll notice that the percentages get smaller and smaller, mostly because Bitcoin's market cap, total market cap, or the total amount of money inside of Bitcoin is getting bigger and bigger. So it takes, so it's a lot harder for it to keep going up and up, you know? So that's why we have diminishing returns. So you see the trend, the percentages are getting lower and lower and lower and lower. This one is 228, this is 161. So if we just look at this trend and say, okay, so the next cycle peak is gonna probably be lower than whatever this number was, then we could expect that on the very maximum, at the very maximum, you know, when they're equal to each other, the maximum would be $214,000. But we know usually the next one is gonna be smaller than the one before it. So I like to just do a little guesstimate, you know, to say 164%. I think this is a reasonable percentage and that would get us at 170k. So yeah, that's that's one way to look at diminishing returns. Yeah, uh, I don't want to delete all these lines right now. But yeah, I'm just trying to demonstrate in general that each of these cycles, the, the rate of return gets lower and lower and it takes longer and longer for the, the cycle to end. So another way to say that was this peak here was June of 2011, and this peak here, November of 2013. So that is a two year difference, two and a half year difference. So December 2013 to December 17, that's four years. So two and a half, four years. Yeah, I know you often hear about Bitcoin having a four year cycle. Um, it only had a four year cycle once. So. I don't understand why people think that it happens all the time. The past two cycles was not four years. And if we look at this one, December 2017 to now, well, you know, it's probably not gonna, you know, peak all the way up here so soon. So we could safely say that four year cycle is kind of broken. It's more likely gonna be like four and a half years or five years. So, you know, quick example showing why we have diminishing returns in lengthening cycles. All right, we're halfway done. And I'll, and I'll explain exactly how I plan to play this and how to make a bit of money. So, bit, uh, Pi Cycle Top Indicator, this is a very good way. All you need to know is when the green line and the orange line crosses like this, that means the market cycle peak, it is either going to be the mid-cycle peak or the cycle peak. But one of those is going to happen very soon. So the first example was here. May 12th, and right over in less than a month, it marked the top. And if we go over here, it crosses again. It shows the mid-cycle peak, crosses again here, and it perfectly, almost perfectly gets the actual cycle peak. So we go back over here, and then it crosses, per almost perfectly catches the cycle peak. But notice how this time it didn't catch the mid-cycle peak like it did here. So, you know, sometimes it gets it, sometimes it doesn't. But it always, always gets a peak. So we come over here, and the reason why I was able to sell all my Bitcoin at around 58,000K 
and then buy back a lot lower was because of this because I just looked at this and I wasn't like I didn't have some kind of crystal ball I just saw a historical pattern and I was like okay well I'm just gonna bet that this pattern is gonna happen again because people are cyclical and people repeat themselves and it was correct and so that's how I'm also going to be able to or how I think I'm going to be able to time the peaks because I'm just going to wait on this across. However, quick note, um, the Pi Cycle Hub indicator might not be accurate next time because each cross has been losing momentum and it's been getting weaker and weaker. So I think the next one might be a miss because look how strong this cross is, right? And look how strong this crosses. It crossed with momentum. It crossed with velocity. It clearly crossed over. And if we go to this one, you know, still crossed, but it's a little less apparent. And if we go to this one, the latest one, I mean, it barely crossed. It was like extremely weak. So that's why I think like the next one is not going to be able to cross in time. And it might even miss it. So what I plan on doing is when it starts to get really thin like this, where it's about a cross, I'm just gonna consider that to be a real cross and then I'll just sell a bit early because the trend is is that the crosses are getting weaker and weaker. All right, so my last reason why I think I'll be able to make six figures by timing the markets is because regression bands. So I already showed you this. Oh God, what is this? God, I hate that button. I don't know what that is, but regardless, this is a regression band of a logarithmic chart. These lines that you see here, that's orange and blue. And so basically, it's done a really good job of getting the tops and bottoms of Bitcoin. So top here, bottom here, top here, bottom here, top here, bottom here. So safe. it's kind of you know safe to assume that we'll know when the top comes when we start hitting the upper branches of this line. So right now the upper branch is at 164k, but notice how like a couple months ago in September it was 130k. So this line gets higher and higher and higher and higher. Okay. And this is the total market cap of crypto in a similar regression band similar to this. It's just illustrated differently. And this is by Benjamin Cohen, the GOAT. And so this is the total market cap of crypto. And remember, this is just Bitcoin. And this shows that whenever we hit coincide between uh, the green top of this green line and the top of the yellow line, that's usually when the, the crypto market cycle hit its peak. And so if we look at the timeline here, it seems to be smack dab in the middle of 2022. So it's not like exactly in like June ish, but that's why I think it's like June and September because it's not going to be like over here. This is a bit late. So between June and September, I think is a good date over here ish. So and if you look at what that means, June of at 150K would be like here. Oh, wait, no, fuck my bad would be like here. So something like something like that and so you know this is a bit of eyeballing and is not very like accurate or data driven but if you just look at it with your own eyes you know doesn't that look like doesn't that seem more likely that this would be the next peak rather than what people what some people were saying like december of 2021 at 200k i mean just looking at this chart you know when if you suggest something like th like this like this is ridiculous like it's not gonna happen so I think this is a much better curve and a much more realistic one so those are my four reason four reasons why and so the confluence of all this evidence right of between this which primarily sets the date at between June and September this which is gonna be a great way for us to realize when the actual peak is the regression band, which is also going to be a good way to notice when the peak is, and this, which help us, helps us uh, figure out, you know, pretty much what price range it's going to be in and around what date. So that just makes me think that in 2022, Bitcoin's going to go from where it is right now, 48K, and it's going to go all the way up to probably a hundred. I'm just going to. 
you know, I wrote, I put this down here, but just to be a little conservative, I'm just going to put between 150K to 200K sometime between June and September. And so because of that, because I think Bitcoin can 3X from here, that is why I think I'll be able to make six figures. And not only will I be up six figures, but remember, I will make it. I will, I will sell my crypto. I will sell all my Bitcoin using the regression band, using the Pi Cycle Top Indicator, using the regression bands. And that's how I'm going to get out and not keep holding it while the bear market, you know, which is this and which is this, where it goes down 80%. I'm not planning to hold through that. So, yeah, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell it and actually have, you know, six figures in my bank account or in my account and then transfer it to my bank account. And so, um, yeah, that's why I think I'll make six figures. I'll probably look back on this video a couple months from now, probably next year. And I'll figure out if, you know, I, I try to lay out exactly what I'm thinking, exactly the reasons why. And I try to be data driven and not be emotional at all. And so I hope that I can look back and think like, OK, this was a decent idea and I could understand why you thought that. So that's primarily why I, why I'm making this video. And um, yeah, that's a you know, if this does work out, you know, knock on wood then, you know, being 21 years old, you know, I'll still be 21 in most of 2022. And if I could make six figures, that would be fantastic. And I'd be really blessed and I'll be really lucky. So this is kind of like a, you know, this is like some, like a video I like to put out there and let's see if it works out. So that was a video I have today. I hope that you understand my framework and my process and all the reasons why I think you know, my Bitcoin estimate is the way it is. And I hope I explained myself. Um, please like, please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.